nonetheless, we're going to get back into Nashville and Tampa here. Don't move. We're going to bring you hotness all day. This is Denouncer Dwayne and Wade Ocean giving you back to Vince Hannity and Electra Blue. Dwayne, Lady O, thank you very much. Vince Hannity and Electra Blue from Tampa Bay and Texas, respectively. And in the time it took me to say that, Electra, a little way from Tampa is lead jammer for the first jam of the bout. Little A up there in front getting through quite easily. We've well, got Nashville in the blue, Tampa in the hot pink for all of you out there in Derby World. Little A barely 21 years old, already been skating Derby for just about four years and still shows no signs of slowing down. Stopped by the back of the pack by Nashville. Managed to get to three and the tantrums, Electra, draw first blood. So we've got Tampa, number 99, Barbie Bont on the jammer line for Tampa. She'll be up against the M60 of Nashville, longtime jammer standout Rambo Sambo. Barbie Bont, one of the skaters back in the day from Roller Jam on Spike TV, nationally recognized speed skater. In fact, Bont skates, Bont boots, that's her, was instrumental in that victory for the tantrums over Boston at East Coast Derby Extravaganza. But Electra, it's Rambo Sambo, lead jammer for Nashville. That's right, Vince, but hot on her heels is Barbie Bont. Back in the pack, that's the pivot number one twist it takes. She will be called off for what was likely a low block, but Rambo will get through for about two points. Holds Barbie scoreless, and Nashville, just like that, cuts the lead to one. And cutting off those bruises, we thank Dr. Hauschka, the WFTDA's official bruise healer. Lose that bruise with Dr. Hauschka's ouch aid. So we've got Rojo Grande, number 50 feet for Tampa. On the amazing, line. amazing 50 feet tall, up against number 14, Rock Nasty of Nashville, a transfer from the Little City Roller Girls over in Tennessee. Up front, it's Lily the Kid and Lunch Lady for Tampa, trying to slow things down. Lily can't quite hang on, oh. and Rock Nasty gets the call, lead jammer, and Rojo hung up by that three wall up front by Nashville, not quite out of play or not signaled by the officials on this one. Here comes Lily the Kid to try and break things up. Coming through the pack on her scoring pass right now. Tampa still not through. Rock Nasty powers her way past the lunch lady, clears the thumb is out, grand slam. Nashville and Rock Nasty. Well that didn't take long, a couple of minutes into the game when we got our first grand slam. Well, both teams certainly with explosive offense and fast packs and hard hitting. Rojo Grande finally clear of the pack on her initial pass. Rock Nasty looking like she may try and get one more pass on through. And three wall for Tampa getting up front with Lily the Kid, a lunch lady, and the nightmare on Bush Boulevard, Betty Krueger. So we saw a lot of that uh, pack start on the jammer line at the Westerns, and we've seen it twice now here. Oh. Calling off the jam already is Nashville. Getting one more point on that round. Six points altogether. That should go ahead, put them up to eight with Tampa Bay holding steady at three points. And I do have to do a quick acknowledgement. We know over at the Bricks in Ybor City in Tampa, the Tampa Bay Derby Darlings who couldn't make this trip as well as the Derby Darlings fans are watching on WFTDA.com. And Derby Darlings and Derby Darlings fans in the Bricks in Ybor City, we're glad to have you along with us for the ride as we'll go back with 88, 89, 90 miles an hour of Little A up against Nashville's Rambo Sambo. Now again, employing that quick start on the jammer line to get that pack moving. Little A is clear she will not get the call as lead jammer due to a minor track cut. That will go to Rambo Sambo, who quite wisely cuts it off right off the bat. And really, when Little A gets that far out, Electra, there's no better choice than just to call it off. That's right. When you're that uh, far back and you see that they're about to score, you want to call it off to prevent any bleeding. So now we have a start on the pivot line for a change. How about that? A little novel strategy there. <laughs> I thought we had a new pivot line for a second there. <laughs> God, the pack's gotten so much tighter since we started doing this. What happened? <laughs> Blocking crew up front for Barbie Bump will be Lily the Kid, at lunch lady at pivot, Betty Kruger, and number 18, Reese's Terry to pieces. 
Nice booty block by Benny Kruger allows. Barbie Brock with a hop, skip and a jump to get the call. Lead jammer number 99. Number 318 for the Nashville Music City All-Stars. Four Leaf Roller finally clears her initial pass through the pack. There goes Pivot Lunch Lady with a nice pivot on pivot booty block. Barbie with a hop, skip and a jump, hangs on the inside line. One blue jersey to beat. Gets around outside. Lady Fury will call it off. Keeping the All-Stars scoreless and four more. And just like that, Electra, Tampa cuts the lead to a mere... Or, I stand corrected. Nashville picked up a few points there, but they'll cut that lead to four points. Lining up again on the jammer line here. We got number 613 from Tampa. That'll be flirting with disaster. Veteran jammer down since day one, since Tampa started publicly bouting in 2006. Was out with a little bit of an ankle injury from about 2009 to 2010. Fully recovered, showing no signs of having an effect on that. Flirting will go head to head with Rambo Sambo for Nashville, who's got one pink jersey to beat. That's the pivot, Twisted Tink. And courtesy of Mala Monroe, she'll clear out the inside and get through on the inside and lead jam call for Rambo Sambo. Hot on her heels though. We've got flirting with disaster. So Rambo's gotta get through and call it off quickly as she did, gets her four points and done. And Electra, I gotta give credit to Rambo, just squeezed by just with Barely a centimeter to spare on the inside lane. Perfectly legal. Gets the four. Cuts it off. Not an easy thing to do at this point. What are you seeing as far as the pack play with what Nashville's doing to get those lanes for their jammers, Electra? Well, we've got uh, tight tight packs here and uh, trying to... Oh, we got they're taking a knee now. They're trying to get this pack started quickly. Get those jammers out of the box. Well, when you've got explosive jammers like Little A, Barbie Bot, you want to get those jammers up and going as quickly as possible. Now Nashville's trying to counter that by getting a three wall or four wall in the back. Tampa may need to, and they'll do just that with Pivot Lunch Lady coming in to try and break things open. And they'll clear the outside lane. You will see Tampa take preference for that outside lane and it works out as 90 miles an hour of Little A will get through and get the call. Lead jammer and up front, Betty Kruger. Big booty big, block. Big booty block. The booty of doom for Bush Boulevard. That's why they call her Betty Kruger. <laughs> Recycling with number 138, Lily the Kid. Now f all four Nashville blockers getting up front, trying to help things out. A will clear. I don't even think Nashville's jammer on that pass has made her initial pass. Thumb is out. Grand slam for little A. And not a moment too soon. Closing that gap for Tampa to 12 points to the Nashville's 15. Three to tie, four for the lead, and a major track cut, power jam, little A. Look at the blocking crew trapping Nashville inside, A untouched, double grand slam, a perfect 10 for 90 miles an hour, Electra. Well, I think that's exactly what Tampa needed, a little jammer time in the box there for Nashville. Taking full advantage of getting their, all the points they can rack up at this time. You've got to get those bodies. You've got to get that wall in Lil A's face. Otherwise, she will hurt you. And another four point, 14 point jam for Lil A. And just like that, the tantrums retake the lead. And this is good for Tampa, too, because now they can start with a jammer, the Nashville jammer in the box. So another power jam situation. Um, obviously, Tampa taking a need to get this pack started right away, take advantage, full advantage of the time that they have uh, with Nashville in the box right there. Yeah, the good news for Nashville, they don't have to deal with Little A jamming this jam. The bad news, they have to go with the other explosive jammer for the tantrums, number 99, Barbie Bont. And Twist It Tink, her friend, Maximum Blondage, trying to come around, clear out, trap the two wall to the inside to let Barbie come around the outside. Doesn't quite work, but Barbie with only the pivot to beat, and she'll get that lead jam call. Nashville having to let her go because they are a little bit out of the pack there. Past 20 feet, I think. No pack. 30-ish. And now it's a micro pack, 4-2 and a power jam. It's an ultra jam for the tantrums. This is just what they want. Here comes Barbie. Here comes Sasha Hotbitch trapping them to the outside. So here comes Barbie the inside, virtually untouched, and the thumb is out. Grand slam for number 99. We're seeing more and more of this uh, penalty trouble here, and that's when a lead change can turn very quickly, and obviously Tampa has taken advantage of all the penalties. Whoa! Oh, and 
And yep, that's gonna be a call for a major low block. And just like that, another power jam for the tantrums. Now we got Barbie in the box right there for Tampa. With so a track cut, I believe. Basically a five second power jam at this point under WFTDA rules. And now number 318, four leaf roller will come back on out of the box. And up front, Bridges and Hose trying to turn Barbie Bond outside, unsuccessful. Barbie clears, grand slam once again for 99. So Nashville still not through the pack, so Barbie's just racking up the points around here. And I love this four wall that the Tantrums are running with 901 Musa Bruise, ADD Leia Flat, Twisted Tink, and 512 Sasha Hoppage just all over the jammer for the Nashville Music City All-Stars. Barbie Bach going for follow the leader with number 3184 Leaf Roller. She will not quite clear. She will call it off, but she will draw in minor illegal procedure because for going to the box, she loses that call and all the rights thereof of being lead jammer. Four Leaf Roller having a little trouble getting through the pack, was not able to get lead jam, which would have been a crucial uh, thing to have at that time to be able to call off that jam while Barbie was racking up the points for Tampa. And of course the best way, Time, team timeout, that'll go to Nashville. That's their first team timeout of the bout. Both teams with three team timeouts throughout the bout. And I was just about to say, if you want to try and get through that pack fast and quick and get those lead jammer calls, there's no better way than to do it with Adam Wheels, the official wheel of the WFTDA, and of course, Rydell Skates, the proud partner and the official skate of the WFTDA. We thank them for helping us bring all this South Central Region playoff action live on WFTDA.com. Show me Derbecue. So we've got a little timeout here. What do you think Nashville's talking about right now, Vince? Well, Nashville's trying to get their head straight. They've, As you correctly point out, they had those huge penalty troubles, just let Barbie and Little Ray run wild and get those huge jams that they've more than doubled up Nashville, 34 to 15. This is only the fourth bout these two teams have ever had between each other. However, Nashville leads the all-time series at two and one. Nashville the three seed, but Tampa, Tampa was watching that bout at Westerns last weekend between Denver and Rat City, and they, when they saw what Rat City did, they said, that could be us in one week from now. That's right, Vince. So we got for Nashville, Rambo Sambo on the line here. And she'll be up against Big Red, 50 feet of an amazing Rojo Grande. And we got a small pack for Nashville, up against four blockers for Tampa. Really, a lot of it has just been this penalty trouble for not only the Nashville jammers, but the Nashville blockers, turning it not only into a power jam, but an ultra jam, when it's a 4-2 pack that you're having to fight against. And Tampa, doing what they like to do, trap the blockers for the opposing team to the inside, let the jammer use their speed to come around with the outside. Classic hallmark of Florida Derby strategy. Oh, Rambo Slambo quickly skirting around number 18, Reese's Terrier to pieces around the outside there to get lead jam for Nashville. Rambo saying, hey, that's not a bad idea. Let me see if I can work for it myself and working out quite nicely. She likes Reese's to pieces. Reese's tearing to pieces. But she'll be sent off to the <laughs> penalty box. And I believe it's number 78, Betty Kruger, being sent off for, if I saw the signal correctly, a high block. And Rambo will clear five points for the Nashville Music City All-Stars. I'm noticing that the inside line is left a little bit open. Uh, Rambo Sambo very good about catching any inch uh, to get through the inside line right there. See, there she goes again for another grand slam for Nashville. Well, nice block by one of the Nashville blockers just clearing out 138. Lily the Kid, as you correctly point out, Electra, leaving that, that inside lane so wide open, I could have gotten through and gotten the grand <laughs> slam on that one. Oh, Rambo taking a little tumble there from a hard hit from Lily the Kid, number 138 from Tampa, and smartly calling off the jam at that time. Damage done, lead will be cut, 34-25, Tantrum still up top, and a little bit of conflicting signals on the pack. Our jam timer is signaling for a team timeout, but our head ref is signaling for an official timeout. And that's going to be Captain Lunch Lady and Bench Coach Antagonized with the tantrums coming out. And that is number 11 for Nashville, Jennifer Smith. We'll see if we can hear from our announcer rep as to the reason for why we have the official timeout. While we've got this official timeout, we'll point out that Dr. Hauschka celebrates the fresh faces of the WFTDA. If you're anywhere near the Missouri or Kansas area, stop, come here, stop by their booth and get your fresh face. 
And of course, in addition to Blaze Streaming Media bringing you all this derby action on WFTDA.com, we've got to thank Elemental Technologies, the world's most powerful video processing solutions. This is a pretty exciting uh, HQ opportunity as well. I know that there's the free feed, which looks pretty good. I was watching it the other day, um, but there can't beat the HQ. And you could almost hear the hits. You get the high quality. You get to see the fine details when Tampa is wearing their black jerseys. You can see the pink trim with the pink flamingos, reminiscent of their mascot, Frank the Flamingo. He's got some appearances here in Kansas City Municipal Auditorium. I don't think you need the HQ to see these hot pink uniforms, however. Oh, these hot sporting. <laughs> they can see these out in Wichita <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Umpire strikes back, and the rest of his crew still going over things. We're not quite sure. We've got one blocker, excuse me, two blockers in the box for the tantrums, and one, the pivot, Mala Monroe for Nashville. We still haven't heard from the refs here on what they are discussing out there. Well, they're likely talking about fast girl skates, which of course is the industry pioneer in boot sizing and configuration for women's feet. So if you want to skate the way Nashville and Tampa Bay are skating out here, check out fast girl skates. And you can also check out antic boots, reckless wheels, and moto bearings. They too are revolutionizing roller derby. And then the outside straightaway between turns two and three, some fans on the track starting a Let's Go Tampa chant. I'm sure the belligerent fans will have something to, to answer back to. I met them last year on the tour bus going back and forth, and today they were getting belligerent uh, with their first beer, I think at 10 o'clock this morning is what I saw. Oh, no, actually the beer didn't open until 11, so they were a little late starting on their belligerentness. I got to say, Electra, I'm a little surprised. I'm seeing them in just in the upper mezzanine, but they are for belligerent fans, they are shockingly silent. Not belligerent enough. I think that they didn't start selling beer early enough for the belligerent fans to get belligerent. I mean, can you be belligerent when you're silent? I don't think so. Belligerent usually entails, you know, a yeah, little I, noise. I, I, unless you're throwing stuff or something. I don't know. Um, well, well, while we're waiting for that official... Uh, Timeout to come back to us. We've got Rock Nasty number 14 for Nashville. And that was a Vuvuzela behind me. I don't know if y'all heard that. <laughs> Maybe some uh, belligerent fans behind us, perhaps. And Rock Nasty will be head to head with 88, 89, 90 miles an hour of Little A. Little A will be assisted by Leia Flat and Muse of Bruise. Rock Nasty just powering her way past Leia on the inside lane. She is through. She is not Lee Jammer. Or, or apparently, she is. <laughs> As our, our jammer of DJ Zazzy Ref says, sorry, my bad. We appear to have a few skaters in the box. Oh, we got them standing, so that means they're about to come out. And Number 18. That'll be Reese's Terry to pieces, a second season skater, but Rock will clear for four points and call off the jam, and that will cut it to a five-point tantrum lead with just about 13 and a half minutes gone in the first period. So a lot of heavy defense, obviously, happening on both sides of these uh, for these teams. The point scoring kind of creeping up little by little. Haven't had any big jams yet, but well, there's, it's early in the game. Well, we talked about it a little bit with the previous bout with Atlanta and Houston with Dump Truck and Big Daddy denouncer Dwayne Cunningham saying it's really a lot of parity that we're seeing in the South Central this year, that there's not that much of a difference between the two seeds. And we're seeing it even with the three and the six seed keeping it close, even with the Tantrums lead and a three roll up front with Rambo Sambo trying to get around Betty Kruger, Tyson Maniac, and just gets by the inside. We'll get the call, lead jammer, Rambo Sambo, Nashville in the blue. I'm telling you, don't give her any of that inside line. She will take it, take full advantage, and get lead jam every time. Electra, I think that's the big flaw in the tantrum strategy so far. They're so content to try and get the outside that they're leaving that inside line wide open. And Derby 101 says you never leave that inside lane never unprotected. Never leave it open. Especially when you have two teams so closely matched as these two, you have to just stay tight on that line, keep your defense tight. Rambo Sambo trying to take the outside at that time, though. But Not successfully. Gets introduced to the Taz Maniac. Taz, a recent transfer from Little City, but Rambo will clear another grand slam. And just like that, Nashville has retaken the, our third lead change of the bout, and we're not <laughs> even 15 minutes gone. 
Well, I think the record so far of this uh, tournament is nine lead changes that we saw at the Gold Coast game. Oh, I think we can beat it. There's still plenty of Derby to go. <laughs> It'll be a power jam for Rambo Samba, but finally Barbie Bump back out of the box. Looks around, 15 points, Rambo Sambo. Oh, and Barbie being sent off for a major illegal procedure. My guess is that when she re-entered from the box, she re did not re-enter at the back of the pack. Big mental error by Barbie Bunt. And just like that, one more minute for Rambo Sambo. Good night. Tasmaniac can't stop Rambo Sambo. Good Lord. Nashville having another opportunity to start off uh, with Power Jam perspective with Barbie in the box for Tampa. It all we got Rock Nasty there on the line for Nashville. And it'll all fall on the mighty shoulders of Twisted Tink. Sasha Hotbitch, the muse of bruise, and lay it flat for the tantrums to try and kill the power jam. We've got full complement of blockers from both teams. And that's where right. tends to sit up at the pivot line. Electra, any thoughts about why they're doing that? I'm sorry, I was just watching Tampa again move to the outside to let Rock Nasty easily go through that inside line. Tampa's got to get on that inside line. Well, if I know Coach Shirley Insane and Bench Coach Antagonize at the half, if they're not doing it before, then they're going to say, watch that damn inside watch. line. You're, it's killing you at this point. Well, especially with those, yeah, they're trying to slow the start down a little bit and keep that block going, but they moved over just enough to let her through. And they've been chasing down, so they're, yep, that's going to be a, somebody is going to get Grand a major out of play, and I think they're going to signal that on ADD Leia Flat. Yep. And the tantrums, unfortunately, just those mental mistakes starting to add up. Unfortunately. Oh, but nice juke from Barbie there. Coming out of the pack very quickly. Getting in there and juking right there. Of course, Nashville calling off the jam yeah, right. as Barbie comes around the outside. Rock Nasty saying, that's nice, kid. Doesn't matter. I'm calling off the jam. You're not getting any points. Thanks anyway. Nice to see you. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right, who we got out there? We got Little A, number nine zero in pink for Tampa. And she'll be head to head with the M60 of Rambo Sambo. Four three pack will favor the Music City All-Stars. And again, classic Gotham Philly, just trying to get right to that jammer line. Who needs a pivot line anyways? Now we're seeing this uh, back defense line, Tampa trying to, trying to hold that back line. We saw Seattle do this quite a lot in the Western. Right. Sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's not. Little A with a minor track cut, it doesn't matter as Rambo Sambo is through and already called lead jammer. Now a three wall up front. Here comes Lunch Lady, the pivot for the tantrums, trying to break things up. And again, classic tantrums move. Block the blockers to the inside, try and get the outside lane, but A gets it through midway through. Both jammers now in scoring position. And Rambo Sambo coming around, looking for that inside line, which she gets with a hop. Oh, big block, but not quite enough. Lunch hadn't quite re reached boiling point of that one. That was only about 190 degrees on that. But they're going to call. Oh, they're going to call her for a high block at the end. Oh. So it will be two in the box for the tantrums, but ADD lay a flat standing. So she's got 10 seconds or less on her penalty. And now we've got a Nashville roller girl setting up for intentional fourth minor. That's going to be Rambo Sambo. So it'll fall on Barbie Bont, number 99, and number 14, Rock Nasty, 3-2 pack, favoring Nashville. That's smart that they, for Rambo to clear out her penalties like that. Obviously, a very important jammer for Nashville, so they need to get her penalties cleared and back out to score points as quickly as possible. Now, we see some teams do that with the intentional form of minor. We see some teams, they'll set up with the jammer at the pivot and say, stay out at pivot until you get that fourth minor. Any preference as far as what you see with modern derby strategy on that, Electra? I'm sorry, we, while we were talking there, we just saw Tampa quickly get in, get a couple of points and call it off. And Barbie Bont right there. Barbie slowly chipping away at the stone. She's gonna get two or three, if I caught that correctly. Score update will be 76, or six, excuse me, 67, 36. Nashville with just over 10 minutes left in the first half. 
So now we have everybody lining up on the jammer slash new pivot line. And here's what I like with what the tantrums are doing. They're letting Nashville go outside, but they're keeping at least one blocker on that inside lane in front of Mala Monroe. That's going to be Reese's Terry to pieces with Betty Kruger and Lily the Kid. There's at least one. Oh, it's going to be a fourth minor on Betty Kruger for a legal procedure. Finally, no pack, so both jammers will get sprung free. Nashville taking a knee right there to get that pack moving. Said, I'm enough of this standing around. Let's let's play derby. Have at thee. And Little A, unfortunately, getting knocked to center track, having to hit the brakes to avoid a major track cut. And around the outside of 11, Jennifer Smith, lead jammer, will go to the Nashville Music City All-Stars and number 36, Double D, Mala Monroe. Well, we got Little A hot on her heels right there. Nashville with lead jammer status. Let's see what Mullen does right here. Yes, yeah, she's calling it off. Smart move when you have a, a lead like that, like a 30-point lead that we have right now. Well, still plenty of time. Why to waste the energy? Still plenty of time to play derby, but any time that you can keep the opponent at zero, why not? Exactly. So again, rock nasty on the jammer line for Nashville. She'll be up against number 613, flirting with disaster in pink for the tantrums. And so here we have Tampa with a short pack in the back. Trying to get the pack moving. Out, oh, Nashville taking a knee. Let's get this going. A little bit different there as Lady Flat, the pivot for Nashville, will stretch out and then come back to avoid from intentional destruction of the pack, major penalty. Defense up front, the pivot, Twisted Tank for the tantrum, slowing down Rock Nasty. She's joined by Leia Flat and Sasha Hotbitch. Oh, Rock w Nasty, big hit. Leia catches her just within the nick of time. One blue jersey to beat for Flirt, and she will get the call as Lee Chammer, and they're going to send that blocker for Nashville off for a major out-of-play block. That will be for Nashville. That's going to be 1970 Slayla, if I caught that correctly. Nightmare on Bush Boulevard. Betty Kruger with a big shot on Rock Nasty. Twisted take. Pivot for the tantrums. Comes up to join the fun. Leia laying back. We're going to whip to get flirting on through all four Nashville blockers mid-pack. Three wall up front for the tantrums. Now a two wall with a block on Sasha Hotbitch. And I, Electra, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure Rock Nasty's completed the initial pass in this jam. No, she hasn't, Vince. She's just getting pummeled by Tampa right now. And there it is. Tampa's smartly calling off the jam. Flirtin gets the thumbs out grand slam for number 613. So we got Nashville 67, Tampa Bay at 41, here in beautiful downtown Kansas City, Missouri. And this beautiful auditorium, municipal auditorium. It's an art deco building. Very nice. And rather than go with a full 4-2 pack advantage, they'll have number 99 Barbie Bont go for an intentional fourth mine. And Barbie so intent and important in that Tampa jammer rotation, clearly the right call to do as they'll go with a 3-2 pack to try and get Little A on through and she will oh. get the call by the skin by of her teeth. On the edge of that front wheel. That's almost like in professional football how you drag both your toes to stay in bounds and make the catch. And they're gonna call a major low block. That's gonna go on the pivot for the tantrums, number 212, lunch lady. Slaya coming out of the box for Nashville just in time to put the stop on Tampa's jammer. And Little A got knocked down or coming out of turn number two, so she'll say, I got two points, I'm calling it off. Just gonna slowly chip away the stone, and that's not a bad strategy by Tampa. There's still plenty of time. In addition to the less than six minutes you've got in this half, you've got the full second half. You don't need to make any big runs. Just get the momentum, keep getting those two no zero, three zero, four zero jams and go into the half with momentum, do what you gotta do. And they have all the halftime to chip away at the strategy and reconvene at the second half. And three, two, pack. The two will be for Tampa with Sasha Hotbitch and 901, the Muse of Bruise, and again. Rock Nasty getting lead jam for Nashville. A little surprised on that one because I was watching Nashville hang more to the inside, but Rock Nasty decided to go to the outside that time around, get the lane that I think Tampa was trying to get for Rojo Grande, and it worked a great success for Rock Nasty Electra. 
Tampa closing that inside line, but also leaving the outside open at that time. Well, that's the problem you've got when you've only got two blockers on the track. Finally, Barbie Bont done with her one minute for the intentional fourth minor. So Tampa, once they clear out the box, and here comes Lunch Lady to the pivot. And Lunch making sure, yes, we are going to re-enter at the back of the pack so that doesn't happen to us again. But Rock Nasty, thumbs out, grand slam for number 14. Tampa's still not through, I don't think, on their initial pass, so Rock Nasty's gonna keep going. We've gotta give credit to that three wall up front for the Music City All-Stars. And Rock Nasty also running down the clock a little bit, knows that uh, she's got a little time to play with. Less than five minutes left in the first half. And Tampa wisely shifting from the back to the front to make Rock Nasty expert more speed and more effort to try and score points, leaving their blockers at the back. So Rojo will pick up. Whoa, a little surprise. They will signal her as scoreless. Rojo sitting there thinking, hey, I passed at least the hips of one, if not two. But until the officials hold those fingers up, as it is what it is. And that's right. Rambo Sambo coming back for more there for uh, Nashville on the jammer line. And with no minor penalties, it'll be number 99, Bont. Barbie Bont. Starting fresh. 4-3 pack will favor the tantrums. Lily the Kid, the lunch lady, Reese's Terry to pieces, and Betty Kruger take a knee to spring Barbie free. Now that was a smart call for Tampa. They want to get that pack going immediately to get all the scoring opportunity they can, get Barbie Bont out there through the pack and in scoring position. Barbie will get a minor track cut for cutting in front of Rambo Sambo. And that's, no, it's going to be now a major oh. track cut. Mental mistakes just killing Barbie Bont in this first half with the track cuts mm. in this jam and that illegal procedure in that jam several jams ago. Otherwise, Barbie Bont would just be all over this pack like dynamite. Power jam opportunity for Rambo Sambo for Nashville. And we got another player in the box for Tampa. I wasn't, didn't see who that was. That is the pivot trying to catch from the where our booth is. I believe it's 2-1-2, the lunch lady. And it's all alone in the pack. It's one three eight. Lily the Kid, number 18. Reese is tearing to pieces and number 78, Betty Kruger. Bridges and Hose trying to break things open. Rambo taking that inside line. Easily through for a five-point grand slam. Nashville's pack work. Look at that trying to go with divide and conquer. Kruger was trying to hold the inside lane, but it was just one-on-one. -on -one. And really, if you're going to be an elite jammer, you've got to be able to beat any one-on-one -on -one blocker jammer matchup. And that's exactly what Nashville's jammers did, Electra. So we've got Barbie standing up. Less than 10 seconds left in her penalty. Rambo Sambo. Spying her, very smart. Rambo Sambo's always looking at the pack and always looking at the other players. He knows exactly where everybody is at all times. Well, if you see the bench coaches here for Nashville, they have these green and red flags. And I was looking at those. It's a signal clearly if they're holding up the red flag, hey, go ahead, call it off with the pass. If they see the green flag, it's to keep on going. You know Everybody's I mean? got a different strategy out there. I mean, all the coaches. You know, it really, it's not rocket science, so. <laughs> It's strategy 101, so you know, That's right. You don't need to be you don't need to be I think sneaky. Rambo Slambo probably knew exactly what she was doing. Didn't even have to look at those shiny flags. Speaking of shiny flags, if you need to make sure that your shiny is shiny, you've got to check it out with Derby Skins. We thank Derby Skins with all our other sponsors and thanks for bringing us all this WFTDA a South Central Region playoff action for 2011. <laughs> So little A having a little trouble at the back of the pack there for getting taken down by the Nashville blockers. Little A just taking a pounding and lay it flat oh. trying to force the major track cut. Nashville's jammer trying to take a knee to avoid it. And that's going to be a fourth minor on number 14 rock nasty. Slayla getting knocked out by Musa Bruce. So no track cut minor or major for little A. One blue jersey to beat. Just one more. Little A coming around the outside there. Just shrugging off the block by the pivot 36 double D. Marlon Monroe. Got to watch out. Getting a little bit elderly there. Nice oh. can open the block. Big hit from Marlon Monroe. Finally, here comes Musa Bruce to help assist her out. Oh! Musa says, come on out. I'm right here. Take the hit. Goes outside, and Hay flies on through and says, please, no more. I'm calling this off. And a 0-0 score for that pass. 
Period clock now under 10 seconds. Unless somebody's going to call a timeout, we're going to go into the half. With Nashville in the box. And that's going to be the half. Nashville has doubled up the tantrums, 86 to 43, 30 down, 30 to go. Tampa has just got to cut down these mental mistakes and get their heads together at the half to try and get back in this one, Electra. Welcome back to bout number four of the 2011 South Central Region Playoffs Show Me Derby Q, hosted by the WFTDA and the Kansas City Roller Warriors. We've got less than 90 seconds left in the halftime break. Nashville has doubled up the Tampa tantrums of the Tampa Bay Derby Darlings, 86 to 43. My name is Vince Hannity. I am joined by the legendary original Texas Roller Girl, Electra Blue. Hi there, Vince. Howdy. So right now you're seeing Texas on the track with No Coast warming up for the six o'clock game, which proves, should prove to be very exciting. No Coast losing only to the Texas Roller Girls last year at the Amber Waves of Pain South Central Regional Playoffs. Indeed, went three and one at Amber Waves of Pain, hosted by the No Coast Derby Girls. Went up from, I think it was either the eighth or the seventh seed, all the way up to the fifth seed. Came in at eighth, went up to the fifth. This year coming in at seventh. And if they, obviously, if they, if, if they win against Texas, then they're moving on. But if not, they're looking to only to get to the fifth seat again this year, unfortunately, for them. Well, they had dropped down, if I recall correctly, down, coming to, in at seventh this down to the seventh. Year. I know they were upset about that. They had about what was basically from last March to about June or July of this year, about a 13-1, and 13-2 and two sanctioned bout winning streak. Just the Texas bout was the only thing that really was a gripping the plans until they lost to the Chicago outfit earlier this summer. Well, it's another good opportunity for them. It's going to be a good game either way. A good learning experience if they lose. And they'll take that knowledge for the rest of the year. Indeed, that bout will be at 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check your local listings, of course, as always. And thanks, of course, to Adam Wheels, the official wheel of the WFTDA, and to Rydell Skates, a proud partner and the official skate of the WFTDA for bringing us all this playoff roller derby action. We also want to take a moment to remind you that this is all available on HQ, high quality, much crisper, sharper image than the free stream. $20 for the whole weekend? I believe it's $20 for the whole weekend. In addition to the whole weekend, you get access to the archive for the next 90 days after the tournament. If I recall correctly, I know it's been that way for the previous two playoff okay. tournaments we've had the previous two weekends, Electra. That's correct, especially since those at home are, some of them are actually at work, sneakily watching on their TVs, or their, actually there's computer screens at work, I should say. Watching Derby at work? I am shocked, shocked Shocking. and appalled. I would never do anything like that. Shaw. I had a big Tom, a friend in uh, Texas, text me and said, give a shout out to, to all of those that are working. And I'm trying to listen, but I'm trying to very sneakily do it at work. <laughs> and as long as we're giving shout outs, one more shout out to all the Tampa Bay Derby Darlings and their fans at the Bricks in Ybor City in Tampa, watching all tonight's action between the Nashville Music City All-Stars and the Tampa Tantrums. Glad to have you along with us, as well as all of you watching at home. Or at work, whatever the case may be. Home, work, the car, wherever. On your phone. On your phone. We stopped a whole party last week watching the games at the Western Regional Playoffs on our phones. And, of course, the Western Region Playoffs, just like the South Central Region Playoffs, sponsored in part by the Five Stride Skate Shop, the preferred shop of Bonnie Thunders, Deranged, Psycho Babble, Susie Hot Rod, and Teflon Donna. No surprise by Tampa Strategy starting things off with Little A jamming once again. Now a 3-1 pack because Nashville ends that last jam with two blockers in the box. A third standing up with less than 10 minutes, 10 seconds, excuse me, out of her penalty. 10 minutes. 10 minutes is an awfully long time. Oh my goodness, I, if only. One blue jersey to beat, going outside in with Mullen Monroe, the pivot. Little A's got to get around through. Mullen Monroe, a one-woman wall, able to stop her long enough for Nashville to get Lady Fury through to get Lee Jammer. Lady Fury, five foot three of Fury. She was involved in the original Tampa Nashville bout held back on July 26, 2008. That was the win 
for the Tantrums. The only win the Tantrums have had in this series so far. Nashville currently leads the all-time series two to one. Nashville calling off that jam uh, with the ref flag, or the, uh, I should say, the coach flag, telling her to call it off. With Tampa hot on her heels, that was probably the smart move. Rainbow Sambo looking to take her an intentional fourth minor to clear things out. So it'll be number 14, Rock Nasty in blue for Nashville. Jamming against number 99, Barbie Bonds in the pink for the tantrums. Now Barbie, we checked the whiteboard at center track. Barbie has five trips to the penalty box at the half. WFTDA rules say you only get seven trips to the box. That seventh trip, you're done for the bout. You're gone, but certainly not done as number 14, Rock Nasty, as she'll get the call as lead chamber, Electra. And Barbie keeping it clean this time around, hot on her heels. Probably going to force Nashville to call this jam. Let's see what happens. Rock well, Nasty. Well, of course, Tampa doing smart defense with that staying up front with the Nashville blockers in the back. It's easier for Barbie to try and get in front and score points than it would be for Rock Nasty to get past and score points as well. Barbie trying to engage, trying to get around the rearmost blocker. It's a race to see who can bat. And Rock says, you know what? I'm not going to risk any further. I've done what I needed to do. Rock Nasty playing a little defense herself to keep Barbie back there before she called off the jam. No scores for either team. Two scoreless jams as Lady Fury for Nashville in the blue. We'll take the jam star. She's up against 88, 89, 90 miles an hour of little A for the tantrums in the pink. Nashville starting uh, this jam with only three blocker, blockers on the track. Tantrums trying to do a two by two sandwich for the three wall for Nashville. Doesn't quite work out so well as Lady Fury trying to get around Betty Kruger just, just Barely hangs on that outside lane and dodges the track cut. Here comes Little A through the pack. And a major track cut that will go on the pivot for Nashville. That's going to be 36 double D, Mala Monroe. And there's that red Nashville flag being held up. But I don't think Lady Fury's looking around to see it here, Electra. And with Rambo Sambo coming out of the box right now, just in time to help Lady Fury. Little A coming around the backside here. In scoring position. Didn't quite catch it in time. A will get two points and Nashville held scoreless. And, re and really, Lady Fury, she needed to call that off a lot sooner. She was just playing with fire on that one. I think one. she was playing with fire. You gotta be careful. You have to, until the fourth whistle to continue to score. So if you put the guns on, a little extra speed, which, uh, which we saw Tampa do, then they get a couple of points. Tampa going with the knee to trigger the no pack to start things off for flirting with disaster. Number 613, she's up against number 14. Rock Nasty possibly looking to clear out that outside lane for flirting to come on through. No, flirting will go midway through to inside. And that's going to be Bridges and Ho slowing things down for flirting, but she finds the inside lane. Leads. Uh, nope. No, she did not get lead. I heard the whistle. I thought it was going to be a call for lead jammer. It's actually a major penalty going on britches and hose i don't know if that was for a low block or a forearm regardless it's now a three three pack no advantage for either team and rock nasty rock. will finally get the call and calling it off just as flirt with disaster is coming around the outside in scoring position that call was done with good timing rookie leagues that's how you're supposed to handle it <laughs> with a little breathing room is always nice so Rambo Sambo out there again for Nashville. Once again, number 99, Barbie Bont for the tantrums in the pink. And then Tampa starting on their knee, trying to get this pack uh, going as quickly as possible, trying to take full advantage of the time that they have. Well, they got the one blocker advantage. It's just what Barbie Bont needs. She'll get through like lightning and get the call as lead shammer. This is exactly what Tampa needs. They're up a blocker at this point. They just need to trap either to the inside or outside, as many natural blockers as they can, get that wide open lane for Barbie Bont to get on through, start tacking up those points, and slowly chip away the stone. There's 25 minutes left of the period, more than enough time for a comeback at this point, Electra. That's all right, Vince. And here she is coming around the outside here. Lots of pink in the back. Whip around by Pivot, the lunch lady. Three wall for Barbie to get on by. Barbie with a 360 stays up right. Here comes the lunch lady to break things open. Lunch trying to split things up the middle. Here comes Reese's tearing to pieces. Pushes Kruger inside out. And we've got Rambo Sambo about to hit the back of the pack here. Barbie seeing her just in time. 
Now, Barbie doesn't get called for the cutting the track because she did not improve her position, even though that one skate went into center track. It's the two prongs for cutting the track. It's going out of bounds and improving your position from where you were before you went out of bounds. That's why for our new fans at home, no penalty for Barbie Bond. That's right, which is good because she's been in the box enough for one game, I think. Please, Barbie, no more penalties, no, no more trips, no mas. So Rock Nasty again for Nashville. She's up against 90 miles an hour of Little A. Penalty box empty, full strength for both teams on the track. And again, we're seeing it right lay out as we have so many chances. Oh! But Little nice. A out through. Little A sneaking right through there. She does that on occasion. Does she? She it's is Little, little A. a. Nope. It stands, the A stands for awesome, it stands for amazing, it stands for whatever shows that this 21 year old can fly through the pack. Tantrum's trying to clear out the inside lane. Little A gets oh. part way through, <laughs> backwards. Backwards, around in circles, calling it off in the, the process, just in time. Shucking, jiving, making it look easy. And of course, thanks to Derby Supply, they make it look easy with the best customer service in the business, period and making it look easy and keeping you healthy is Derbalife custom nutri customized nutrition programs and coaching put more in life in your game. Big there red. We go. Full complement of blockers. Rambo Sambo for Nashville. Shucking and driving as you say Vince. It, Her way I, to the front. And really we're seeing class, it's pretty much both teams have their cards on the table as far as how they're laying out the initial pack. Tampa's liking to hold things up front. Nashville's liking to hold things at the back. For this particular jam, it's worked out for Nashville as their jammer. That's going to be 36 double D, or excuse me, M60, Rambo Sambo getting through and getting the call. It's Rojo Grande trying to catch up back there to decrease the, or stop the bleeding, as we say. Of the points. Past one Tampa blocker with the lunch lady. Here comes number 11, Jennifer Smith, to try and break things open. Still a three wall. And Miss Smith says, okay, yeah, let's call it off before Rojo can cut that lead. That's right. So we got 87 for Nashville. Tampa Bay with 51. 21, well, 22 minutes left on the period clock. Still plenty of time for Tampa to get those points in, close that gap a little bit, taking full advantage of the time with this knee start that they're doing. Gets the pack going right away so that the jammer can get right out of the box right away and right to scoring position. And really when That's got, the hope anyway. When you've got jammers like Barbie Bont, like Little A, who are explosive with that, you want to get them off the line as soon as possible and rack up as many points as is humanly possible. In this case, that's the strategy working in their favor. You need all the time. When you need, when you need more time, that's the way to get it going faster. But credit to Lady Fury of the Nashville Music City All-Stars. And oh my goodness, oh. the sixth trip to the box for Barbie Bont, another major, major track, track cut. cut. Where is she getting those cuts from? Is, that I, trying to, is she trying to jump the apex and doing those? I can only think that the surplus that we have from the Clinton administration included a surplus of track cuts that We've Barbie Bont We've got Nashville in the box right now, so Barbie coming right out. Now the Nashville jammer will sit there for as long as Barbie was in the box, which wasn't very long. I was say, he's got a five second power jam on that one. Barbie will not quite clear that. She is out of place, so she'll get off. Lady Fury back out of the box now. And Barbie coming around the outside. And they're gonna say that's Barbie's initial pass on that one. Lady Fury, I think, had already completed her initial pass. So yeah, she will get signaled with a thumb out grand slam for five foot three of Lady Fury. So Barbie can only get one more uh, penalty for this game before she's done. And really, Barbie bought just so crucial to the tantrum chamber lineup. I'm looking her out there. She's just winded at this point. Just huffing and puffing. I, I don't just taking a pounding From by the ladies roller, in blue. Yeah, just sticking a beating back there. Starting to look a little tired. I mean, I'll give I mean, I'll give these ladies credit. I think I'd be hands on knees, huffing and puffing about 30 seconds into the first jam. So I can only imagine the pounding that Nashville's Music City All Stars in Blue have laid out on number 99, Electra. Barbie Bont looking very dejected and frustrated at the back of the pack there, trying to get some help from her blockers. Finally getting through. Well, really, the acronym HYFM, help your friendly, or excuse me, HYFJ, help your friendly jammer, holds true in so many cases. I still, 
I do that every time. Anyways. And there is belligerence in the friendly city of Kansas City. That's right. We were waiting for the belligerentness to start, and there they are. I see them drinking their tall boys of Miller Lite, it looks like. I don't know. <laughs> so Nashville now 97, Tampa Bay with 55, 19, and some change left in the period clock. 42-point lead, still a chance to come on back, but really Tampa's got to get their heads on straight and make their move pretty much right about now. And through getting clear will be M60, Rambo Sambo Beverly just got through just on the nick of the outside without getting that track cut. Number 78, Betty Kruger trying to force that track cut, couldn't quite get it. And number 90 miles an hour of the lay clear for the tantrums. Inside Tampa pack. trying to run the pack a little bit up there, making it a little tougher for Rambo Sambo to get up there and get her points. And that's going to be the pivot and captain for Nashville. Jennifer Smith, number 11, clearing out Betty Kruger. So that's going to be at least one point. Breaking up that wall. Trying to get around number 18. Reese is tearing the pieces. She does and calls it off. Four points there for Nashville. Bringing the lead now to 101 to Tampa Bay's 55. Rock Nasty on the line for Nashville. And for the tantrums in the pink, it'll be number 613 flirting with disaster, the six season veteran. And of course, when you have an experienced skater like flirting, you need experienced derby skaters getting you the right gear to take you to the next level, courtesy of Derby for All, one of our sponsors here for Show Me Derby Q, the 2011 South Central Region Playoffs. Flirton taking the pounding, still ongoing. One blue jersey to beat. But in enough oh. time for Rock Nasty to fly on through midway and get the call as lead chamber by Oedipus Ref. Rock Nasty coming around the outside here. Probably going to try to get a couple quick points and call it off. Tampa hot on her heels. Uh-oh. Bowling for blockers coming around turn number two. Rock Nasty stays up right. Four, four. In a way that bowling for blockers helped out Flirton because she was able to stay up right, get that inside lane, follow right behind Rock Nasty, but still at this point, a what I believe is a 46 point Nashville lead. They can't keep getting the four, four, three, threes. They've got to chip away the stone and Barbie Bont taking the jam star for the tantrums has to play perfectly from here on out. There is literally no room for error as we'll go to an official timeout. And as long as we're at an official timeout, we'll thank some more of our sponsors, including Roller Girl Skates, whether it's on the WFTDA stream feed or you're here in Kansas City in the Municipal Auditorium. Look for Trigger in the crowd to sign up for a free set of wheels from rollergirlskates.com. And of course, we always have to thank Dr. Hauschka, the WFTDA's official bruise healer. Lose the bruise with Dr. Hauschka's ouch aid. And again, you're watching us live on WFTDA.com, also available in HQ. Lovely high quality, $10 with about $20 for the weekend. Gets you access to the archives for 90 days from the tournament. And I don't know if they're still running that special work because I know with the initial weekend, it was $80 for all five tournaments and the archives. Keep an eye on WFTDA.com for more deals with the upcoming tournaments, including next weekend. I believe it's going to be Monumental Mayhem hosted by the Naptown Roller Girls of Indianapolis, Indiana, the North Central Region Playoffs. That'll be Friday, October 7th through Sunday, October 9th. And if you want to relive all of these moments, the DVDs are available. The whole package, I believe, is $200. For all 17 bouts for the weekend. Electra, we've already seen, out of the four bouts we've had so far, we've seen two, in, dare I say, instant classics with Green Country and Gold Coast and with Atlanta and Houston right before this bout. Very exciting matchups. Very tight games all around. Knee, no pack to spring Barbie Bont free and also spring Rambo Sambo free who oh. pivots past Lily the Kid. Now trying to get around Betty Kruger and Will. Took that inside line, coming around, gets lead jam for Nashville. Barbie, though, fought her way up there, hot on her heels. Tantrum's looking to trap 
36 double D uh, Mala Monroe in 1971 Slayla in the trap play to control the pack and shift things around. Now shifting things around, getting back up front to keep Rambo Sambo from scoring more points. Here comes Barbie. And Rambo Sambo. Playing a little defense there. Uh, keep her back there. I believe it's a diplomatic version saying playing a little defense there. <laughs> Sometimes, toying with her a little bit, but calling it off. Sometimes nonverbal communication is more <laughs> effective than verbal communication, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Rock Nasty on the line for Nashville. Now Tampa's got to make its move. Penalties adding up. Two in the box. They've got a third standing up, number 308, Bridges and Hose. So it's Rock Nasty, Little A. Little A coming to the outside. Little A just got one blocker to beat, one-on-one. -on -one. We'll get around outside. We'll get the call. Lead jammer, tantrums in the lane. And there you see the strategy working in full effect. Tampa taking the knee, getting the jam started right away so little A can get through. Start scoring some points. She only has to pass one of the Nashville blockers to get the ghost points. Indeed, for the first hips of the opposing blocker, you pass anyone who's in the box to get points for that. Any, not just in the box if you're not on the track for whatever reason. And it's That's a 4-3 pack. It was initially a 4-1, 4-2 pack. This is what the tantrums have to take advantage of right now. These are opportunities that you cannot squander if you want to win. You must win this bout if you have a chance of going to Denver for WFTDA championships. The lay will get on by. Four points for the tantrums. Smart move for her to call that off because Rock Nasty was right at the, about to hit the back of the pack to start her scoring round. So the tantrums will cut the lead to 42, 105, 63. Nashville in the blue, still leading. 50 feet of Rojo Grande will take the Jam Star head to head with M60 Rambo Sambo for the Nashville Music City All Stars. Tantrums in the pink, Nashville in the blue. Still 4 3 pack favoring the ladies from Tampa Bay up front. It's number 18, uh, Races Terry to Pieces, Pivot 212, Lunch Lady 138, Lily the Kid, and number 78, Betty Kruger. Rojo Grande having a little trouble in the back of the pack there against Nashville. But the three wall up front doing its job, forcing a track cut oh. on Rambo Sambo, and Rojo gets through, lead jammer oh. tantrums. Leaving that inside line open, too concerned with the other jammer. Well, we talked about in the first half that Tampa was too busy looking at the outside to keep that inside line open for that jam. The tables are turned. Nashville leaves the inside lane open for Rojo Grande, but a scoreless jam. And they, and they needed those scores. I'm not sure if I would have made that call. I think I might have kept going to see if I could sneak one in, but again, these players are so evenly matched that, yeah, I think I, I, I would have called it. Lady Fury on the line for Nashville. We got Barbie out there again for Tampa. Tampa will take knee, but they're not simply no pack. I don't. I think what happened was Leia wasn't on one knee at the initial whistle. The now pack, we've got the, no pack. The pack is up front. Now the skaters in the front do not need to skate backwards because they are actually trying to get the pack moving. And in the meantime, Barbie bought like a house of fire rockets through the pack to get the lead jam call. Where has this Barbie bot been since about the 10 minute mark of the first period? I think she was sitting in that box over there. I, I think you may be right actually. <laughs> Five foot three of Lady Fury for the Nashville Music City All-Stars through the pack. Both jammers now in scoring position. Pack being established towards the back. Three wall up front for Nashville. Barbie shucking and jiving. One blue jersey to beat. Gets around outside. Looks around and will call it off. Four points for the tantrums and number 99, Barbie Bont. That's what they need. It start chipping away. There's still time to do this. 105 for Nashville, Tampa Bay 67. It's not a huge deficit to make up. We've seen bigger deficits with a lot less time. If you get in, get out, have at least one big 10-point jam, it is not unrealistic for the tantrums to retake the lead, especially when you've got an explosive jammer like 90 miles an hour of little A on the jam line for you. She'll be up against M60 of Rambo Sambo for Nashville. 4-3 pack will favor Nashville. And Tampa can't be standing around on the initial whistle. They've got to break the pack, get things going, and get little A free. Period clock. This, this is exactly what Tampa, there you go. You can't be eating up that time. You've got to get the jammers moving. You cannot stand around when you're down by 38. That's right, Vince. 
And just like Ruby started off as a race, it's a race to the front of the pack. And that race is won by 90 miles an hour of Little A Tantrum's lead jammer. All right, let's see what Little A can do with this lead jam now. Rambo Sambo hot on her heels. Now a 4-2 pack for favoring Nashville. It's only lunch lady at pivot and number 78, Betty Kruger. A gets past one, gets the one point, holds Rambo Sambo scoreless. And Antagonize will call team timeout for the Tantrums. I believe it's their first team timeout of tonight's bout. And while we've got the team timeout, we'll thank RollerGirlSkates.com. Have you been smacked by RollerGirlSkates.com yet? If you are here in the Kansas City or Kansas greater area, come to the Municipal Auditorium, stop by their booth to play. And additionally, thanks to Merch Mama, supplying swag to the Derby Nation. That's Merch Mama. We also have to give thanks to our following tournament partners, including Spenland Media, Union Vacations, Protech Dent Mouth Guards, Skate Court, Jules Doyle Photography, Derby Skins, Five on Five Magazine, the official magazine of the WFTDA, Sin City Skates, TICSkateGear.com, and Vanilla Skates. Thanks to all of you for helping out, bringing all this WFTDA region playoff action, and thanks to all of you for watching on WFTDA.com. Looks like we're back to the action on the track here. And Starting with a short pack for Tampa. 2-3 pack will favor Nashville all alone for Tampa. It's Musa, Bruise, and Leia Flat. They're gonna be blocking up front for 6-1-3, flirting with disaster. She goes head-to-head -head with Mala Monroe. And really, Tampa just content to let Nashville have that no, rear wall. And it's Mullen able to stay on her skates for that. Able to get lead jam. And that rear wall has been working out so well all about long for Nashville. I'm surprised that the tantrums haven't come up with something to say, you know what, we've got to break this up. It's, it's jamming up our jammers, if you'll pardon the pun. We've got to get things going. Once Barbie, once Flirtin', once Little A can get up to speed, get the explosive action that they can, just like Mala Monroe's getting there, she'll get through four points and call it off. That's right, Vince. So we've got just under 10 minutes in the second half. Nashville at 109, Tampa Bay at 68. Lady Fury on the line for Nashville. And we've got Barbie Bont out there again for Tampa. And again, six trips to the box. Barbie cannot be anything less than absolutely dead, solid, perfect. She's got the speed. She just needs the power to muscle through those Nashville blockers. And oh, no. that's, that's number seven. Barbie, ladies and gentlemen, Barbie Bond is done for the night. That's got to be trip number seven right there. And I, I hate to be a doomsayer, but I think that may be the nail in the coffin for the tantrums. Yup, and umpire strikes back, is waving Barbie Bond from the penalty box <laughs> off the track. Barbie Bond is done for the night. She has fouled out with seven trips to the box. In the meantime now, we've got Lady Fury taking full advantage of that expulsion and just motoring around this track. You look a little upset, Vince. Are you gonna, are you gonna be okay? I, I, I'm a little overcome. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> oh, and that's gonna be. Oh. oh. We, uh, All right, this should be a, interesting. How is this gonna work it's out? It's a power jammerless jam. A power jammerless jam with one expulsion, one jammer in the box. Well, umpire strikes back is coming for an They're official timeout. They're looking time confused out. now, like what do we do? We haven't had this one before. Well, because the tricky thing is once somebody fouls out, some, when they start the next jam, they have a jammer come in to tank her minute in the penalty box. But now that's triggered because Nashville's jammer got her own trip to the box. So I don't know if they cut that short and she only serves however many seconds or <laughs> and they just sit in the box and the beginning of the next jam do 10 seconds and both get back out. It's going to be a, definitely an interesting call. We don't see that a whole lot, actually. So I'd be curious to see what they decide here.
And as long as we got some downtime, we'll thank some other of our tournament sponsors. Of course, thanks once again to Dr. Hauschka bringing all this region playoff tournament action since 2010. If you're right here, anywhere near the greater Kansas City, Missouri, or our greater Kansas area, come by the Municipal Auditorium, stop by the Dr. Hauschka booth, and check out their amazing bruise healing and skincare products. And you can even look for them online. That's Dr. Hauschka. And, of course, thanks as well to Elemental Technologies, the world's most powerful, not second most, not third most, the most powerful in the world for video processing solutions. There's the Nashville fans starting to make a little noise up there in the stands. I think more and more belligerent. With 109.68, 40 points, 41 points to make up here for Tampa. Well, one or two power jams, Tampa could be right back into this. But of course, losing Barbie Bont for the rest of this battle, that's you know, basically you're riding Little A, you're riding Rojo Grande, and you're riding Flirt with Disaster for all they're worth. And you pretty much need the eight minute, 21 second performance of their careers at this point. I don't know if they'll put another jammer in that rotation to replace Barbie Bont. Who do, you, who do you think Tampa should put in there? Well, I'm looking at number one, Twisted Tink on the bench. Traditionally, she's a blocker and pivot, but I do see her with a jammer star on now that may be what Coach Shirley Insane and bench coach Antagonize are deciding are the replacement for the rotation that they'll go with Flirting with Disaster and Twisted Tink, number one for the tantrums. A little lay out there again for Tampa. She's been actually had a very good game herself, keeping it very clean. Not, uh, I don't think she's had any penalties, has she? Well, if she's had any trips to the box by the half. It was certainly less than two trips to the box. Um, she's going to stand in the box. I believe they're going to have her serve about 10 seconds in the box. Once again, we have a jammerless power jam. Jammerless power jam. So little a taking Barbie Bont's place, I'm imagining, starting right out there. And Lily being smart, re-entering in the back of the pack, oh. behind the jammer line to try and avoid any illegal procedure, and she will get the call. Lead jammer, 90 miles an hour of Little A. All right, let's see what Little A can do with this opportunity here. A lot of blue in the back there. Tampa needs to get back there to help her. This is when, oh. Hacking and whacking through. and smacking on through the pack for a grand slam for number 90. No pack, now reestablished towards the back. Tampa trying to trap from the pivot, number 14, Rock Nasty. Outside lane for little A, somebody being waved off for a fourth minor. That's gonna go on 5-1-2, Sasha Hoppich. Two wall up front for Nashville. Now a three wall with Rock Nasty. Here comes Rojo Grande to break things up. Bridges and Hose, number 308. Five. Lady Fury coming out of the box for Nashville right now. Has to make her initial pass, so the little A still has some time to put some more points on the board. And Nashville may be moving out of play. Yep, they're signaling no pack, so they got a little on by. Little A, thumb is out, grand slam. And A will call it off the damage done. Closing little, the gap a little bit, Vince. Little, 109 to 78 for Nashville to Tampa. What an amazing story if the tantrums with Barbie Bont fouling out can come from behind from basically 43 down at the half and take the win. And Nashville's gonna call a team timeout. That is their second timeout of the bout. Huddling through, so really all they have to do is hold this lead. So I'm imagining the coach is probably telling them something of that sort. Uh, probably run the clock down, keep the jams going. Really, if he's not telling them to do anything but run the clock down, with all due respect, he's an idiot. <laughs> take the slow starts <laughs> off the pivot line, take your time clearing out there. Don't have the jammers force any penalties or trips to the box. Just keep going easy, going to get it. Run the defense. That's pretty much Nashville's game, or what Nashville's game plan should be right here, right now. We'll see if that's what if that's what he decided as well. With Three. Mullen Monroe. And Twisted Tink, number one, traditionally a pivot and blocker. Now we'll take the jam star for her teammate in maximum blondage, Barbie Bont. One minute up, we're just about ready to get back underway. Tantra's possibly looking to get lunch later to clear out the outside lane for Tink. But Tink will come right up the middle and Lily the Kid and Betty Kruger hold the inside line. But Mala Monroe just taken 
Lowly the kid way outside, and now drawing Kruger way outside. And oh no, Twisted take a major penalty. This is exactly what the tantrums didn't need. Oh, Mullen Monroe getting called out for a back block there. So it's gonna be a 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000. Yeah, I would've skated a little slower going down there. 8, 1,000. The yeah, clock, but the clock does not start until your butt's in that seat. So yeah, but why not take your time when you have the clock to your advantage? Indeed, as long as you're progressing towards the penalty box, it is not considered insubordination. That's There's right. no rule that says how soon you gotta be there. So it's about a 12 second power jam for Twisted Taking the time it takes for her to get around back. Molly Monroe's done with her 12 second penalty. And nice defense at the back of the pack by the rearmost. That's gonna be a fourth minor. And that's gonna go on M60 Rambo Sambo. Betty Kruger can't quite, well, no, catches just enough of Nashville's jammer but goes out of bounds that she can re-enter in front of Kruger. Twisted Tink, big, big uh, block there from number 10. And I can tell you right now, the Tamsins are missing number 29, Ramam Noodle, short in stature, but with the heart of a lion. Ramam so crucial in the Jammer lineup and the team lineup that helped the Tantrums go 2-0 and for the first time ever at this year's East Coast Derby Extravaganza. Twisted Tink trying to get through that pack. Union Jack you up, number 10, keeping an eye on her and not letting her up there. Well, the problem is with Twisted Tank, they're just really not, the Tantrum's blocking crew is really not focusing on trying to get her on through. They're just trying to hold off the Nashville blockers and hold off that Nashville jammer. And of course, that's exactly what Nashville wants at this point. Time is on their side for sure. And the Tantrums will call team timeout, and I believe that's their second team timeout of the bout. Quick reminder, keep an eye, keep it tuned in here to WFTDA.com at 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and I believe it's going to be 4 p.m. Pacific Time. It will be the Texas Roller Girls, Texas Executioners, head-to-head with the Elk Coast Derby Girls, Mad Max Scenes. Then for your Friday night main event, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, and 6 Pacific, it will be your Gold Coast Derby Girls All-Stars head-to-head with your reigning and defending South Central Region champions, the Kansas City Roller Warriors. Now, Vince, with the timeout over here for Tampa, what do you think the coach is going to be telling them at this moment besides score a whole lot of points? Well, in addition to that, it's that they can't stop waiting around. They've got to strike like lightning, fly like the wind. they got to keep move, move, move. Dictate the pace fast, fast, fast. That will be Tampa's game, and it should be Tampa's game if they want any chance of cutting into this now 40, or excuse me, 34 point lead, 34 to tie, 35 for the lead, not out of the realm of possibility, two big jams, and Tampa's right back into it in just enough time for it. But again, like we talked about with Barbie Bont, they have to be absolute, dead, solid, perfect. And likely with a jammer in the box, it's Twisted Tink for the Tantrums. It's a power jam for number 14, Rock Nasty. Pushing She'll power through to get lead jam. Wow. So we've got Tampa Jammer in the box right now. And that's still Twisted Tink taking the spot in her rotation for her fallen teammate, or her fouled out teammate, I should say, number 99, Barbie Bont. Three wall towards the back of the pack and the tantrums just, I don't know, I'm not sure what the tantrums up front are doing. They've got to help get Musa Bruce out from Nashville running the trap play so they can shift the pack and force that three wall up front out of play. Denver is actually very good about that, killing the penalty. Hanging on is the four wall, but Rock Nasty will clear and the thumb is out. Grand slam for the Music City All-Stars in blue. Twisted Tink now freed from the box. Does she have enough time before Rock Nasty comes back around? Splits the uprights, flies by ADD, lay it flat. Leia was setting up for a whip and Tink's like, no thanks, I got this. Clamping down Three a rock. Ball of Tampa up front. Rock Nasty calling it off. Gotta give credit to Rock Nasty, had that head on a swivel, looked around, 
saw Tank turn it on the Jets and said, yeah, we're not going to risk this one. Call off. The, right. the one and only correct move to do in that situation. That's right. So little A back on the line here for Tampa. Now a, if my math is correct, and that's always a dubious position, it's a 40-point Nashville lead. And unless they have two absolutely, you know, basically a 20-point huge jam at this point, get enough time to stop the clock, call timeout, and get one more 20-point 20, 20 jam, this may be all she wrote for Tampa Bay, and they may be playing for fifth place at this point. Rambo Sambo trying to jump through the two uh, Tampa blockers right there, not quite making it. Now playing a little defense herself. Nashville just trying to power away with Rambo Sambo past Lily the Kid, now trying to get around number 78, Betty Kruger. Kruger can't quite get those outside cutting the tracks. Nashville is staying inbounds enough that when Kruger makes that move, there's enough track left that they stay inbounds and still avoid the cutting the track call. Three wall up front for Nashville. Slowing down little A. Tampa's gotta get a blocker up and help little A out. You can't do it all by yourself against the three wall as a jammer. That's something where you need to send a blocker up and get helped out. It's plain and simple. Easy for us to say up well, here in, yeah. the, in, the, well, in the cushy seats. Well, you're the one who's done this for years, so you know what you're talking about at this point, so. This is true. Four points for Nashville as they clear the pack, head of the swivel, they'll turn around and call it off. That's four points for M60 and Rambo Sambo for Nashville in the blue. So Nashville running the clock down a little bit. Smart move on their part because they do have the time on their side. We have less than two, actually one minute, seven seconds in the period. Approximately a 44 point lead. So unless basically the skeletal structure of the entire Nashville team completely collapses at this point in space and time and flirt with disaster and just fly through at will, it looks like Nashville may have this one. Spontaneous combustion perhaps? Well, maybe that too, sure, sure. And again, that rear wall with Nashville just working extremely well against the Tantrums Jammers at this point. Flirting trying to power way through, but not having much success. Tamp or excuse me, Nashville will go for the transition. And finally, the Tantrums breaking that hole, whip around, flirting with disaster. We'll get the lead jam call for the Tantrums. Nashville blocker getting called out. Oh, and they're gonna call a major forearm so this will end on a flirt with disaster power jam. Are you kidding me? No pack signal by the officials. The belligerent crowd, uh, the belligerent fans booing that. Because like good belligerent fans everywhere, they always jeer the officials' correct decisions. Grand slam for number 613, flirting with disaster. Period clock has expired, jam clock now controls. And this is exactly what the tantrum should have been doing all along with this bout, trapping the blockers to one lane, getting a huge opposite lane for their jammer to get on through. And Flores, she's just tired. Just, if this was the first half, she'd have the Jets on, but she's digging in deep, but she's running on empty, but she will get through for one goes. more. Grand slam, Perfect. closing the gap a little bit. Perfect 10 for number 613. Just enough time for maybe one more pass through the pack. Oh, nice juke around the inside there past Susan to get another grand slam. 15 points. Where was where was this where jam was this all 15 minutes ago? Bringing them to 98 points. One Tampa. blue jersey to beat. Flirting will call it off with five seconds left. 19 points. Flirting with disaster. Stamper will break the century mark, cut the lead to 20. But regardless, ladies and gentlemen, your winners and advancing to the semifinal round to face the winner of Texas and No Coast, your Nashville Roller Girls Music City All-Stars. I think the unofficial score at this time, 122 to Nashville, Tampa Bay at 102. Tampa will go on to Saturday at noon. They will face Green Country in the consolation bracket. Nashville, of course, will face the winner of Texas No Coast coming up right next. And that bout will be tomorrow at 2 p.m. local time, 3 p.m. Eastern, and at high noon Pacific time. Tampa's showing a lot of heart, though, Vince, out there. Fighting till a bitter end. Great way to finish 
broke the century mark, closed the gap to 20 points. Well, really, the athletic ability is there. It's always been there. Just unfortunately, and longtime Tampa fans will hear this refrain. They've heard it so many times. Just pretty much mental mistakes are what did it, and, and particularly with Barbie Bont fouling out. 